So hello, my name is Sean Roberts. Um, I am the Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Tennessee Secretary of State uh, Hargett, and, um, and uh, we're asking different elections officials from around the country. Uh, we've got New York and Ohio and a, and, uh, a few other Washington, a few other states under our belt. And we wanted to ask an elections official from Tennessee um, some uh, questions from the voters' perspective, being so close to the election. So here's the first one. Um, what should the voter do if somebody asks for your ballot? And this would be either at your door or on your way to dropping it off or um, assuming that you're voting absentee, of course. Um, uh, so what should the election uh, official, or excuse me, what should the voter do, sir? Well, first, Tennessee law says that you're spo- the voter is supposed to mail back their ballot. So I, I would, if, if someone came and asked for my ballot, if, assuming that I were voting absentee by mail, I wouldn't give it to them. Number one, I, I just wouldn't want to trust somebody else with my ballot. I would personally want to see it hit the mailbox and know that I put it in the mail. And, and we know of problems that have occurred in other states. I mean, those are well documented. What happened in North Carolina, um, what ha- has happened elsewhere that, you know, I, I just think that s- the voter needs to make sure that their ballot gets in the mailbox themselves. So that that's and that's Tennessee law is that the voter mails are on ballot. What we're encouraging people to do is if they know they're going to vote absentee to make their request now, right. um, you know, they have until a week out. And, and one of the things that we're facing and this is national as well is, you know, our deadlines that are set in statute don't necessarily map up with what the United States Postal Service believes is a deadline. And, and I'm not being critical of the United States Postal Service. You know, our our relationship with them is probably better than it's ever been, frankly, just because some of the things that have been said have forced a lot of secretaries and election officials on both sides of the aisle to have questions. And at the end of the day, postal workers really want those ballots to get out, I believe. You know, we hear about, uh, you know, a few bad actors here and there. Um, there are bad actors everywhere, you know, and, and I say that, uh, you know, there are bad actors in all forms of life and all professions. And so, you know, I think the post office is genuinely interested in getting ballots back on time. Let's take Tennessee, for example. You know, our our absentee ballot by mail request deadline is a week out from election day. So October, October 27th. Well, if you make your request um, by October 27th and then the local election commission sends you a ballot, you know, as soon as they get the request, you know, probably best case scenario, you're looking at October 29th, um, more than likely October 30, 31st is when that ballot gets back to you. You've got to get that ballot filled out and back in to the local election commission. And you're asking all that to happen within a period of seven days. And, and we know from experience, we've all mailed different things that didn't get there in seven days. And it doesn't make the Postal Service bad people, it doesn't make election um, officials bad people. It doesn't make the voter uh, wrong. I mean, it's just a fact of life. And so what we're really focusing on is if you're going to vote absentee, hurry up and make your request so that ballot can we can get that ballot back to you. And then you, in turn, can get that ballot back to your local election commission. Is there a, uh, an option, sir, to get that ballot or, to, excuse me, to drop it off the elections office or some other location? If, if you know, ten- no, Tennessee law doesn't allow for that. Um, okay. you know, that's, that's a question that's been asked here and actually been litigated here. And, um, and it's just it's not what Tennessee law allows for. And so, Understood. you know, if I can I can talk a little bit more about that. You know, one of the interesting things, and you feel free to cut me off and say, hey, uh, this, that, that's, that's more than I wanted to know, and I've got other things I want to ask. That's fair. Um, you know, no, in, please, Tennessee, in Tennessee, we are an in-person state, in-person um, voting state. So what that means is during a typical election, less than 2% of our voters vote absentee by mail. During a presidential election, it actually spikes to 2.5% of the people vote by mail. Um, simple math tells you that means somewhere between 97 and 98 percent of the people vote in person either during early voting or election day. We've got two weeks of early voting. So and during a typical presidential election, over around 60 percent, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, will vote during early voting. So by the time election day rolls around, three fifths of the ballots are already back into the local election commissions. Then you're taking the rest of those 40 uh, percent of the voters 
and we're spreading those out, you know, in close to 1800 precincts across the state uh, during what most counties have is 12 hours of voting. They're required to have a minimum of 10. Most have 12. And so, you know, and all that happens at the same time that close to a third of Tennesseans actually already had the ability to cast an absentee ballot. So while uh, approximately 33 percent of Tennesseans were over the age of 60, or and I say I should say voters over the age of 60, um, or you know out of town election day, you know there's a certain number of people who are automatically be out of town living, you know who live out of state, um, or who are sick, hospitalized, or disabled, maybe permanently. So at least a third of those people are already qualified to vote absentee, yet they still continue to vote in person. So um, it, it's put a pretty big transition in Tennessee. And so we've had to do a, have a lot of conversations helping Tennesseans understand, here's what it takes to cast an absentee by mail ballot in the state. And mm -hmm. at the same time, work with all 95 county election commissions to make sure that we, we give guidance to them that they can use in their respective counties. So that's been part of our challenge here. Um, you know, and, but we're not unique. I mean, there's a lot of states out there having similar challenges to us. Very few states out there have successfully done, um, you know, broad spread by mail balloting. You know, I, Washington's obviously one. Um, you know, I think Colorado has been another. I think Oregon has, from what I understand, done pretty well with it. And, and then we're seeing some other states that, you know, they've tried to ramp up and go to a massive by mail balloting, universal massive by mail balloting, where they have sent ballots to people unsolicited. And, and that's presented an entirely new set of problems for some of those states. Sure. Sure. So, um, yeah, well, it, it, I guess it goes to the consistency of the system that uh, you don't want to make um, in complicated systems. You don't want to make uh, large scale changes um, uh, and, uh, in, unless you're planning on dealing with failures. Um, and obviously, we, we want to be as methodical as we can with the voting system because uh, People expect their vote to count, and they expect they expect to have uh, less drama during the uh, election. Uh, the well, election. I, and I like how you said that because that's one of the things that you know. And obviously, I'm a Republican, but you know, there are Democrat Secretary of States out there too who I trust a great deal um, to run a good, honest election in their in their state, and I believe they are doing the best they can within the confines of their laws. Right, and you know, and, and we're all kind of. At center stage right now, especially when we're going to see more by mail ballots than we've ever seen before. At the same time, that you know, we have a lot of different narratives that are going out with some people saying you shouldn't trust the United States Postal Service for your ballot. Others are saying you should trust, and others are saying you absolutely have to go vote in person. And then, you know, then you have some people talking about voter suppression, and some people talk about voter intimidation, and some of both. And um, so we are we are right at the center of all that. And, um, and trying to run a drama-free election feels dar pretty darn near impossible right now. We had one in August, by and large, in Tennessee, where uh, we were very fortunate. 94 out of our 95 counties had all of their election returns in by midnight. Uh, we're not going to be that lucky, in my opinion, this November. And I think the nation needs to be patient. Um, and, I, and I say it to Democrats and Republicans, independents, all of us, you know, we would rather get all the votes counted and counted accurately than try and feel like we've got to hurry up and have, you know, an, a vote total for everybody by the time midnight rolls around. Um, I, I think people expect us to get it right, not necessarily done fast. Um, and, and so we're focused on accuracy. Okay. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, that, that is an excellent point. Um, so uh, there's one thing that jumped into mind, um, attempting not to jump all uh, topic to topic. Uh, but uh, uh, for absentee voting, um, which I understand is uh, less frequent in Tennessee than it is in um, other states, but um, uh, do you allow postmarked ballots or do the ballots have to be in hand by election evening, by close? Great, great, great question. In Tennessee, they have to be received by the time polls close. Now, honestly, and, and then I haven't talked a lot about this, it's something we're gonna be talking about um, in the next week or so, especially as the deadline to get those ballots back in looms, is we've had a lot of conversation with the United States Postal Service who has assured us that they're doing sweeps every night to make sure that the election mail is not gonna be 
anywhere left in that facility, that especially as the deadline election day looms, they're going to be working to get those ballots to us. And in fact, I'm going to be encouraging county election administrators to have a plan in place where they make sure that late in the day on election day, that when all by, by closing time of the, the, the post office, that they go to the post office and make one last plan to pick up any ballots that, that might be there. Um, so we, we want to make sure that we get all that we can. Do everything that you can. Well, it sounds like you're going above and beyond within the laws of your state. So um, that uh, that's great. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lincoln Shorts.